Like I tattooed a cow here and I tattooed an elephant here. These creatures are really big and unapologetic. And like, I don't imagine that elephants and cows are walking around like, oh girl, it's not looking good today. You know, they're just like, moo, <laughs> you know, like I'm just like, everything big is awesome. <laughs> Why wouldn't I also be right. big and awesome? Right. So how would I be with my body if there was nothing to fix? Like there's nothing to fix except the lens that I'm looking through. This episode of- all right, so here's the thing. Okay, uh, real quick, just a fast little, don't want to offend anybody. Uh, I don't mean any ill will towards anybody. Everybody should love themselves and all that business. Um, but there is a concern with this movement, the fat acceptance movement or the the anti-body shame movement or whatever it is. Um, anybody can be whatever they want. They can live their life out however they want, and that's their choice. But the idea of having a movement, having a thing where you tell other people what's acceptable or how they should feel good about whatever, if there's a person out here watching a video like this and they are overweight, they're unhealthy, they are they are literally dying just slow motion killing themselves with unhealthy food and lack of exercise and all these things. They exist and they're here and they have all the options in the world and they see your message that you're, you're saying they like that can be a bad message. It doesn't mean we can't each decide our own things and they can see your message and decide it too. bad messages can exist in the world, but it doesn't make you not bad for giving the bad message. Now, I don't know if you are or not. We'll go over that, but it's not as simple as just making people feel better about themselves. If they're doing something wrong for themselves, like unhealthy, like like when somebody does like heroin or something, you try to help them get off of it. You try to take them to to a, a rehab and get off of it. And you tell them, you can do this. You can get away from this thing and you can make yourself healthier so you don't die of like a heroin overdose. Uh, but we don't treat it that way with food and other things like that. And that it, it is like that. So it's it's not that somebody's just looks a certain way. Like if somebody was perfectly healthy, they just ate well and they were really fit. And let's just say they didn't look like the typical attractive person, but they were fit. You could say like, fuck everybody else. Who cares what they think you look like? You should just be yourself. You don't need to change yourself. And you're perfectly healthy and fine. That's one thing. That's a gr- that's a good, um, but I don't know if that's body positivity or just positivity in general. But um, but telling somebody that did something that made themselves be unhealthy and that's killing them, and that they might want to change themselves to have a better life, telling them to just accept themselves. No, you don't accept yourself. That's like, oh, you're shooting up heroin. Just accept yourself. No. So, um, anyways, that was a quick little disclaimer of sorts. Um, but to respond to what she said at the beginning, um, she got the tattoo with, uh, an elephant and a cow and they're big and unapologetic. So here's one thing to look at animals in animals in the wild. None of them are overweight. There is no such thing as an animal overweight. The only animals that are overweight as in over the weight they should be are humans and And animals, humans take care of. So we feed uh, pets like cats and dogs. We feed livestock, usually to make them bigger. A cow in nature would probably look a little more like a horse. Uh, I mean, we we can see it all the time. Just look it up, a natural cow versus a dairy cow or something. Um, So animals just, they eat what they're naturally supposed to eat, and then they are they are like the size they're supposed to be. And so if we have uh, cows that we uh, inject hormones into and then feed certain things and make them basically large (laughs) than they are. So um, an elephant is just the size it's supposed to be. It's just a bigger version of something that could be a smaller version. A person that, that is a certain height that eating the right diet that could be like a certain size if they're in shape and healthy would be a certain size. If you double that size, you're doubling the height, the width, everything. That's a perfectly healthy, double that size person. But if you are a certain height and then you just expand, you're just stretching out your body and adding this unhealthy stuff, then that's that's a different story. So elephants aren't big because anything wrong's happening. They are just the size they're supposed to be. We people are not. <laughs> I mean, some of us are and some are not. 
And uh, so anyway, so yeah, the cow thing is an issue that shouldn't be that big. Um, unapologetic. I don't, uh, I find this word kind of complicated when people talk about this. Like, so it's the idea that overweight people either are apologetic about their weight or you think that society tells them to be apologetic. I think it's just kind of a, a buzzword people like to use. Um, um, but yeah, that, that, that idea, I mean, I, there's nothing wrong with getting this tattoo to feel whatever you feel. If you are a person that have decided, I don't care if I am, they say have decided, has decided, um, that I like eating this food. I like being unhealthy. I'm going to do this poison. That's going to uh, make it hard for me to have a good life. Uh, but it's all right. I like it in the moment and I know it's going to kill me sooner than I would. And I'm just going to let myself be overweight. And this is part of me. And so since it's part of me, I'm going to tattoo these uh, large looking animals on me and then just own this as part of my, my lifestyle. That's fine. There's people that being alcoholics are part of their lifestyle. Uh, there's famous musicians that write great music and they're alcoholics and drug addicts and they, they kill themselves off by the time they're like in their forties and that was their life they chose. And it would have been cool if they were up for something better, but there's nothing wrong with choosing this thing. So I'm not saying there's anything wrong with your tattoos. Um, it's just not that simple that these are big and unapologetic. So you should be big and unapologetic. There's a difference between something just being big and something being wrong. Big. This is the, you're not just born a certain way and you're either fat or not fat. So that's just not how it works. Of our what's underneath pride series is made possible with the support of pros. Stay tuned until the end of the episode to learn how you can join pros in supporting the Hetrick Martin Institute this month and give back to queer youth. Can you talk a little bit about how you're feeling right now? I'm feeling so alive. It's it's that combination of I'm terrified, I'm nervous, and but I also I feel really joyful. I have to reveal that when you asked me to do it, I was like, yes, I love my body. Yes, it's going to be great. And immediately another part of my brain was like, okay, so now we have a window through which we're going to lose the weight and <laughs> we're going to get the skin together and we're going to do all the stuff to get ready. I'm conditioned to believe that this is not the right body. So it's a constant daily work to be like, no, it is because this is the body I have. So there, it must be right. All I can. This is the body I have. So it must be right. No, no. Again, it's like, let's go back to the drug thing. It's like you do these drugs and it affects your body. However, it affects it, it affects your brain. It's like your brain on drugs or on alcohol, driving drunk or something. This is the brain I have. So it must be right. No, that's not how that works. Um, as far as you saying that you, you wanted to do this project with this interview, you love your body, so you want to do it. But then when planning for it, you're thinking, I want to lose weight. You're, you're dismissing it as you're conditioned and therefore it's bad. Like you wish you weren't conditioned. You wish you could just show up without thinking you want to lose weight for this project. Um, but that's not, that's not necessarily a good thing. I mean, so that would mean that what you want is to be not conditioned. Therefore you want in society for people to not talk about that it's healthier to be a certain weight. Or you want people that are attracted to people that are like fit and thin or whatever to not state that they're attracted to. I mean, so the reason that, that we have this idea of what we think of as beauty standards is, I mean, there, there can be a lot of elements to it, but for the most part, people are attracted to what they're attracted to. If the, the beauty standard that we think of that we, that it seems like most people are attracted to, if you don't think that they're truly attracted to it when they say they are, and those are the type of people they like to date and want to, you know, they're just sexually attracted to and they have posters on their wall. The idea that we've been conditioned by the media to think this type of model looks good when really if we weren't conditioned, we would think like we'd be more attracted to overweight people or whatever. Um, that's, that's like saying... If you're saying people can be conditioned to be attracted to people, that's like saying like a gay person can be has been conditioned to be gay and they let's uncondition them. Let's, you know, <laughs> you, you want conversion therapy for instead of the idea of sexual orientation, it's the idea of what's attract, what you find attractive. That's just not how it works. Like I can't decide I want to be attracted to something or not. I, I look out at people and I'm either attracted or I'm not attracted to them. So, um, 
the idea of you saying that you're conditioned so you think you want to lose weight to do this thing. Now, you might want to live in a world where nobody talks about anything involving any of this stuff. Therefore, you don't have to think about it because talking about it is what makes somebody the idea of conditioned. You can call it conditioned all you want, but it means you experience the world that you are in and you are aware of the norms. That's all it means. I can be aware of all the norms and I can like, like I'm conditioned to feel like I'm supposed to like football. Not just because I'm a guy and most guys I know like football, but most people like football. A lot of people go to bars and watch football and all this stuff. And so like in my society, football is what you like. That's a, that's a very popular thing. I don't like football. and uh, But I don't think of it as this thing that I wish my society didn't like it. I wish the, the bulk of everybody in the society liked what I liked. I don't I don't think that way. I mean, sometimes I think about how popular it is and I, I rant about, oh, it's so dumb, a ball and blah, 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 and running across the thing. Um, but it, it, in the long run, it really doesn't matter. It's just everybody likes what they like. So the thing that you're saying conditioned, you, it's just people People will say who they're attracted to. Therefore, we know who is the most attractive. People will buy stuff based on models looking a certain way or go to see movies based on actors looking a certain way. And therefore, these standards get created by us, the people. The people like what they like, and therefore you hear it and you think that you're supposed to look this certain way, so when you're going to go on screen, you think, I need to look this way because everybody's looking this way. Now, you can tell yourself... I don't need to look this way. This is fine. The majority of people in our society are attracted to this, but I don't want myself to look like that. And then, so you don't. But but you aren't owed anything. You aren't owed people not talking about who they're attracted to and movies not being made. You're not owed movies not being made. And the people making movies don't owe anybody putting people in it that they don't want in it, whether they're doing it for artistic sake or for money-making sake. Um, so you you wanting to um, look whatever way you think, like if the world has convinced you that you need to look a certain way so you thought you'd lose weight to come on this interview, that's fine. That's just part of life. There's If you want to get away from that, good luck. <laughs> um, but if you if you want to do what you maybe did, which is not lose weight or not do anything to get ready for this show, that's that's fine too. So, but, but th th there's almost nothing to complain about unless you think somebody should do something different. And I can't imagine any of those things I listed that's reasonable to think somebody should do different. Let's see is the flaws or the things that society critiques or any minute now I'm going to have to start doing, pla you know, plastic surgery or other things. Right. Like last night I was at the spa and I saw this, I was like, is that Kim Kardashian? I was like, oh no, that's just someone who has given themselves her face. I wonder yeah. So uh, it, you saw a person and you're, you're claiming that they got plastic surgery and you can tell that that's obvious or whatever. Yeah. I, mean, I see that all the time. And that's actually a popular thing that people make fun of and say is not attractive. Now, somebody might have some kind of a condition similar to something like anorexia. People that have anorexia and get really thin and still think they're fat or whatever. Most people aren't attracted to that, but they have, they have that mental issue going on, that disease of sorts. I don't really know exactly how to describe it, but where they, they can't get around that. They can't change that if they wanted to or whatever. And so it's probably the same way with somebody that gets like all the fake looking plastic surgery stuff. They're trying to look this certain look because humans exist and humans talk. There's, uh, that's the one thing anybody watching this that thinks about this topic, no matter what side you're on, realize this, there will always be a norm. If something's bad, that's fine. But somebody, if you have, if you have a thousand people and all, all of them state what they're mostly attracted to, there is nothing wrong with this idea. There's nothing wrong with humans hearing what people are attracted to. Now, if, if out of the thousand, like 950 are mostly attracted to a certain size and height, then it is what it is. So I'm, I'm five, nine. If you asked a thousand women what they're mostly attracted to and you got all the different things, um, you'd probably get something like a, t uh, like a six foot two and like some, you know, some people like a lot of muscle. Some people like, um, some guys that are a little thicker or whatever, like, uh, like a kind of a little pudgy, chunky pot belly thing. Not like a big one, but like some people like, uh, like I know people that like Chris Pratt looking more like he did in parks and rec versus the Marvel movies. So anyways, I'm just saying you have a spectrum, but most people would be somewhere in the middle. It'd be like a Ryan Gosling body or something. So if most people just announce, Oh yeah, this is what I'm personally attracted to. Then that exists. 
that you would have to be calling that a bad thing to declare what you're attracted to. And so once that exists, you're declaring that society um, is demanding a thing of you. It's not. Society just exists. People exist. And we ha happen to have language. So we happen to know what's liked. And then we also have an issue where we create processed food and we cr make um, being lazy very easy. And therefore... A large amount of people, like way more than half the people, let's say in the U.S., more than half the people are a thing they should not be. And by, by should not be, I mean like naturally. Like we have created this overweightness and it's something that we are not attracted to. Animals out in nature, they have their hierarchies of their levels of what they're attracted to, but they're all on a spectrum of what we think of as attractive to insanely attractive. Where with us, we have attractive to insanely attractive um, is somewhere around like 10% of the U S and then we have like 90% of people that are in a lot of ways unattractive. And I don't mean like horribly unattractive. I just mean, we see elements of, you can see somebody that looks pretty darn attractive, but the fact that they have like extra love handles or something. And uh, I'm just trying to like pick this apart and be honest about whatever, but you see like extra love handles or whatever, and you can be perfectly attracted to somebody like that. But deep down, the main thing we would want if we got exactly what we wanted and the main look we would have is nobody would have that. That only is created. You can eat an endless amount of whatever's thought of as natural, whether you're a person that like um, – so I'm, uh, well, anyways, you could eat, uh, you could eat, um, just stuff that grows like, uh, fruits, veggies, nuts, seeds, all the things, all the natural things. And there's probably no amount of natural things that grow that you could overeat. You just can't, uh, I mean, from my understanding, anyways, I don't want to get too into like health stuff with this, but even, um, for people that eat meat, you could eat like an endless amount of meat and you're probably going to have the same situation. But as soon as you make stuff where you deep fry stuff or you bread stuff and you process, you pull the sugar out, you have this issue. Um, so anyway, so we, <laughs> sorry, I'm just rambling. Um, we got this issue of people are going to talk about who they're attracted to. And that, sh that I, I can't even imagine that being a bad thing. I doubt you think it's a bad thing. You're just complaining about it without thinking about it. Um, so you have that, but then you also have that because we have kind of ruined ourselves that a lot of people aren't attracted to a lot of people and a lot of elements of people. And, uh, so you, that, yeah, I think, I, I think I kind of covered that. What you looked like. I wonder what face the universe gave you to wear. Can you take off something? Something. Yeah. Whatever yeah. feels like a good first thing. So I want to tell people the other thing that lets me know that no one in the world can fuck with me is that Beyonce sent me a box of Ivy Park things. Even though I was like, I have other shoes that go better with this outfit. I had to bring Beyonce in. Anyone who tries to critique me on the internet or anything, I'm just sort of like. It's okay. Beyonce's got me. <laughs> She's got my back. Can you share a little bit more about what your style says about you? So years ago, I named my style Happy Style. I only pick out items of clothing that I'm like, I really love this. It brings me joy. It makes me feel alive. There's almost always a lot of nature elements in it. It's almost always very bright and colorful. I'm very curvy, so people often assume like femme, femme, femme. But for me, it's much more joy, joy, joy. Like I'm like, nothing's going to be uncomfortable. <laughs> Everything. I hate when people use the word curvy that are very overweight. That's well, any, I mean, a word can mean whatever you want it to mean, but you, but when you're overweight, you're just overweight. Like, so if everybody was like, um, you know, perfectly fit or whatever, some people would ha like have curvier like hips or curvy, you know, the boobs, the butts, or whatever. Um, but when you're overweight, the weight just goes everywhere. I, I don't know. I'm not trying to pick this apart. I just like, I wish, I think words are important and, uh, I, I, we, excuses are bad. So anyways, if anybody's watching out there that wants to lose weight, wants to be healthier, wants to feel better, getting away from ideas of saying, justifying things. Like if you're overweight and you want to lose the weight, but you use words like, oh, I'm curvy. So this fits me this way or whatever. Uh, that is just a recommendation I have is to get away from the idea of words that are excuses.
It has to just be like, I can wake up and within 10 minutes I can look like me. On every vacation at a verbal home, uh, there's someone like you who reunited the family. Yeah. Okay. Can you talk about the assumptions that people make about you based on how you appear? I'm soft, I'm round, and I get a lot of energy from people who want to be mothered, which I find amusing because I feel like I'm very much the, the like radical auntie. I don't feel like I actually have that mothery energy. I also think there's a lot of sexualizing energy that has been there since I was very young because I, my breasts started getting large like sixth grade. So from a, yeah, from a pretty young age, it was like, oh, you must know how to be sexual or you must be intending to be sexual. I was sexual since I was like five or six, but not for anyone else's attention or gaze. It was just like, I figured out what started to feel good in my body. I hate going out into the world and having to deal with men who are like, oh, you must want me and like, you must want my attention on you. And it takes bravery. <laughs> I wonder if she means must like you need to, but it sounds like she's saying you must like, because of how you look, you clearly want that, but that's not a thing. That doesn't even make sense. So. I, I wish people that talk like this, I mean, they, it's clear what's in their mind. It's clear that they just have this hatred for whatever. Like, I hope as I talk now that it doesn't sound like I have a hatred. Like I, I have like probably 60 pounds I need to lose. And, uh, I know people that are overweight that I'm good friends with. And like, like I have nothing against the idea of being overweight. I'm talking about the health aspects of it and the concerns of teaching people stuff. So I hope that when I talk, I don't sound like a person that clearly has some agenda against people. I'm talking about a specific issue and I think I'm being very specific about it. And that, um, I'm, I, I think I'm right with the things I'm saying, um, with these things, it's like, it comes across so clear, like, oh, these men and these gays and they think they my I owe them my body and like like who's saying that? Now if a guy comes up to you and says, Your boobs are out, you you must want me, you owe me your body, that guy's stupid and anybody would say that. Um in in, in case you don't think that anybody would say that. Like that anyways. Even if you're being an asshole, it takes bravery to express a desire. I don't want to respond in a way that's like, I need to diminish you in order to instate my boundary. So a lot of times it's just, I'm not interested or if I can't ignore it, I'll ignore it. I'm able to hold that boundary on the shallow casual level, but on the deeper level, I often get really pulled in by someone else's interest in me. I was probably considered fat by the time I was like 14, 15. And so that means consistently I've been told by society that no one would want me. So then whenever anyone did, no, you haven't been told by society that no... Okay, <laughs> I guess in a sense, you have been told by society that nobody would want you, but that is not a bad thing. That just means you, when you say society, you mean the people. The people have spoken about what they want and they want it. This isn't a bad thing. This isn't a thing really worth talking about. Not that not that anything is not worth talking about, I guess. I guess you've decided to be what you are. And you're talking about this as if it's a bad thing. It's one thing to decide, like, I know that most people aren't attracted to this thing, but I'm going to be it anyways. That's fine. You're doing that. But but then you can't complain about it. That's not that's not how it works. You can't you can't say a bad example because I'm bald. But uh, if you have a bunch of hair and you know that everybody in society likes hair and then you shave all your hair off and then you're complaining about, oh, I'm so... I'm so pissed that everybody in society doesn't like bald people. Don't, sh don't if you know they like hair and you can have hair and you want them to like you, then you grow the hair. If you know they don't like hair and you don't care anyways because you want a certain look, get that look and have that look. But there's nothing left to it. You don't demand something of somebody. A person standing next to me could say that they want somebody that weighs 100 pounds more than me. Or they could want somebody that weighs a hundred pounds less than me, but they don't. They don't get to. They don't get to demand that of me. I just. I do what I want to do, but I can know what they want. I can know they want somebody a hundred pounds more, but I can't be like. So what you're doing basically would be me saying this person standing next to me, like, how dare they want somebody a hundred pounds more? How like I am a person and I know that they want a thing, 
And they're not wanting it of me. They just, in general, they want a bald man with glasses that's 5'9", that weighs 100 pounds more than I am. And they like, and, and I could be like, oh, I wish I could date that person. I know they like a lot of the things that are what I have, but they want 100 pounds more. I could gain that 100 pounds or not gain that 100 pounds and just not date that person. I don't need to complain that a human exists that likes something that I am not. And that's kind of what you're doing just on a large scale. But, uh, yeah. I was like, I better jump at this opportunity. I can look back at that girl in my 20s and, and be like, girl, what the hell? And I can also look back and be like, of course. Like, how would you have made any other decision given what you were given? If I love myself, then that looks like a really clear set of boundaries that I don't lower for anyone and that I don't sabotage myself. You know, right now I'm in a sobriety from self-sabotage, you know, like I can really talk to myself with a lot of compassion and care and be like, oh, you're scared. And what did that bread do for that fear? <laughs> you know, so I just want to note how gay my watch is. This is the gayest Apple watch band you can get. Amazing. Happy pride. Happy pride. <laughs> so can you, um, talk uh. I don't know why I find it so irritating. <laughs> like, uh, I mean, there's nothing like there's I'm very supportive of people doing what they want to do. I'm very supportive of gay people, very supportive of anybody just being themselves, being what they want to be, being what they want to be, doing what they want to do. But gosh, this over this over love of look how gay this is. This is the gayest thing. It's like it became it's become part of like a big like the best joke, like if somebody says like, oh, this is so gay, and it's like, a, it's just like, oh, that you said something so funny, or oh, you're so wonderful because you support this thing. Um, I don't know. I don't, it sounds weird even tr complaining about this, but it's just become this irritating thing. I guess, I guess it's the division. And I don't mean, so there's nothing wrong with doing what you want to do, being what you want to be. And if division comes off of that, if somebody feel separated because of that. It doesn't mean you need to change anything. Uh, sorry, I'm just I'm, I'm just thinking of this off the top of my head right now. So I don't exactly know how I feel about it because there's nothing there's nothing wrong with being part of something. It's just this I feel like people like to separate themselves. People feel like something when they're separate from other things. So I don't know if there actually is a way around this. But um you I just wonder, because I think, okay, so you got, we have to look at the political sides. We got right and left. Um, I'm not placing myself anywhere on here, but I think people on the left feel this horrible thing about people on the right and maybe the same the other way around. And, uh, and so it's this idea of, oh, I'm on the left. I think people on the right hate uh, gay and trans people or whatever. So I need to show that I'm part of this movement that's doing this thing. I guess I just feel like a lot of these movements just show this separation, I don't know what it is. Cause like I, I watch a lot of stuff of people on the right and I listen to a lot of people on the right. And even though I don't agree with a lot of the things, I'm not like, I'm not religious and I'm not, I don't, you know, some people take things a bit too far. I feel like most people on the right are pro gay, pro people being trans if they want to be trans. And like, they're just like, let everybody be live how you want to live where Back like 20 years ago, it seems like there's a lot of people that were anti-gay, anti, you know, anything within that realm. And we, we had to fight for rights. Like I voted to make sure gay marriage existed. I can't believe there was ever a time when somebody thought gay marriage shouldn't be a thing. But now you have people as extreme, as, you know, uh, very, you know, you have conservatives like Ben Shapiro and all the most popular people um, that would be on that side are would would never strike down gay marriage. They're very they're very pro gay people be yourselves, uh, trans people be yourselves. Um, you know there might be concerns on if people should make people use certain pronouns and all these other things. But anyway, so this big fight for like this is my side and you're anti my side, uh, and that's not what you said. But anyways, I'm just rambling for a bit here. But um, 
it just seems to have this pointless division, I guess, because it, 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 it paints this picture that people are against a the thing they're not against. But anyways, I'm going to stop here. I'm only five minutes into this 15. If anybody thinks I should comment on the rest of it, I will, but I just don't want these videos to go on too long. But if you uh, like any of my thoughts here and like what I do here, uh, hit like on the video, subscribe to the channel and shoot me a message if you want to chat on my podcast or something. All right.